I knew I was accountable for my community's security. What I wrote to her was about the fact that the embassy was vulnerable. And what did Secretary Albright say in reply to you? I never got a reply. No reply? No. No. The steady stream of warnings did register, but the response was not enough. Bin Laden had already identified the embassy's Achilles heel long ago. Back in 1994, he'd scrutinized photographs of the building and personally identified the optimum place to plant a bomb. When it comes to planning, Al-Qaeda is in a league of its own. The IRA might have planned months ahead. Al-Qaeda planned in years. Bin Laden was gradually building up a network, a secret network of radical Islamist groups around the world. Now, many of them were already fighting their own local conflicts, but they became increasingly receptive to Bin Laden's call for global jihad. That's holy war against America and the West. Mombasa, on the east coast of Kenya, where radical Islam had taken root. An Al-Qaeda sleeper cell had been operating here, undetected, since 1994. Shortly after bin Laden pinpointed the embassy, cell members moved in, set up a fishing business, married local women, and even started families. The cell would lie low for four years. The cell operating in Mombasa had significant cover. There was a lot of support in the area for radical fundamentalists, and there were individuals involved in shipping and transporting uh, weapons. In fact, we actually believe that some of the explosive material was brought into East Africa through a boat, and they were allowed to operate freely in the Mombasa area. The CIA and FBI were aware of the growing threat from bin Laden and were monitoring his activities through a secret unit known as Alex Station. And how did you rate bin Laden as a threat at that time? I think to, it would be fair to say that uh, we were most concerned by the, the geographic breadth of his activities. We frankly didn't know what kind of a threat he was, but he hated us. He had, of course, his own sources of money and arms, and we couldn't get near him. A year before the bombing, Alex Station planned an operation to disrupt an Al-Qaeda cell in Nairobi. They raided a house, seized a laptop, and retrieved a deleted letter from the hard drive. It revealed that Al-Qaeda members in Kenya were awaiting bin Laden's instruction to strike. They came tantalizingly close to uncovering the plot, but critically failed to identify the sleeper cell in Mombasa. By this time, Alex Station was working on an audacious scheme to strike at the heart of Al-Qaeda. They were planning to kidnap bin Laden. The plan was to go in at night uh, into the compound that he lived in in Tarnak Farm and, and try to spirit him out of there. Uh, tried to spirit him out? Yes, tried to grab him and take him out because we weren't allowed to kill him. We had a plan it as, a, as an operation to kidnap him. The operation was planned with meticulous attention to detail. We had CIA engineers build a uh, ergonomically comfortable chair for him, well padded, very comfortable, and also the shackles had to be a, a uh, padded so there would be no abrasions or bruises on his arms or legs or wherever he was bound. It got to the point where they were so concerned about his safety that uh, our lawyer was told to bring along the kinds of tape we might use to uh, close bin Laden's mouth in case it was necessary to keep him silent. 
so our lawyer took down a, a, a clear plastic tape, duct tape, and adhesive. And the lawyer sat around playing with the tape, trying to figure out which would be less abra least abrasive to his facial hair. But bin Laden's facial hair would remain intact. Senior officials in Washington were reluctant to give the green light. Just 10 weeks before the embassy bombing, the kidnap plan was dropped. Why was it canceled? I think there was a number of reasons. Mr. Clinton and the cabinet had talked about it for several days and decided it was too dangerous. They didn't want to lose our assets and they were afraid if bin Laden was killed, the, and the United States would be accused of assassination. By this time, two Saudis had already been selected for the suicide mission in Nairobi. Jihad Mohammed Ali and Mohammed Alawali were now preparing themselves for martyrdom. Men like Alawali and Jihad Ali are bin Laden's most devastating weapon, suicide bombers. I remember interviewing one would-be suicide bomber in the Middle East and being struck by his unquestioning commitment to his cause and his determination to kill himself and many others, all in the name of Allah. This is a duty God requires of us fighting for his sake and killing the enemy. I go into battle to kill and to get killed, and I ask God to send me to paradise. Two weeks before the attack on the embassy, an Al-Qaeda explosives expert arrived in Nairobi and began assembling a bomb powerful enough to reduce the building to rubble. Alawali and Jihad Ali were reunited in the bomb maker's rented house four days before the attack. Together, they went through the details of the plan. Meanwhile, the cell in Mombasa, which had smuggled in the explosives, was ordered to disperse. Leaving wives and children behind, they quietly slipped out of the country. On the morning of Friday, August the 7th, Alawali and Jihad Ali set off in a truck loaded with explosives. Alawali was carrying a gun and four grenades. Ellen Boomer had been working at the embassy for just four weeks. I can remember it as clear as if it was yesterday sometimes. I had my cappuccino, I did that every morning. I used to work as a driver at the agriculture office of the US Embassy, and I was getting prepared for a trip. Naomi Karonga worked for the Kenyan government in the 22-storey building right next door to the embassy. That morning of 7th August, Friday, I was in my office in a cooperative house, 10th floor. I was in the building across from the small parking lot that was in the rear of our embassy. I was speaking with the Minister of Commerce. That morning, I was at the back gate of the embassy, the place where vehicles load and offload parcels. On my way to the second floor, I stopped in first floor, near the bank, and there was a queue, so I decided to go ahead to my office. When the truck pulled up at the back of the embassy, 
Alawali jumped out and asked the security 